Some data is better shown over time, and it's pretty simple to do using spreadsheet utilities in Cavalry. Thanks for joining me, let's get interpolated. Sometimes these setups can be a little complicated, so make sure to check out my website where you can find written versions of these tutorials. Let's pull up our pie chart that we previously made. In our data sheet, we see an attribute called interpolate. This essentially lets us animate the data values over time by adding extra columns to our Google Sheets. Here's the updated sheet I'll be using for this example. The idea is that you can interpolate the output of our spreadsheet utilities between the numbers in these columns. However, when we update our spreadsheet utilities with a new Google Sheet, we see that it immediately breaks. This is because currently our spreadsheet lookup utility doesn't have the ability to interpolate. I have put in a feature request for it, so if you are from the future, you might just be able to interpolate it here. But today for this setup, we can just delete the spreadsheet lookup utility and then pull in another regular spreadsheet utility from our asset window. Set the column title to total one, check fixed row, and leave it at zero. Calvary ignores the first cell in our sheet since it's the title, and then cell two is counted as zero in our column array. And finally, connect the output of this into our data sheet's source maximum attribute. In order to interpolate between these values, we need to check the interpolate attribute on our data spreadsheet and on our totals sheet. Add a value behavior to the column title attribute in our spreadsheet utility. We also need to connect this interpolator value to the totals sheet column title attribute. But when we do that, we see that it selects the wrong data. So to fix this, we just need to add an expression to our totals sheet to adjust. If we look at our Google sheet, the columns go A, B, C, etc. But when pulled into Cavalry, it acts like an array. So column A will be zero, B will be one, and so on. Our interpolator value defaults to starting at one, so it's showing the value in column B, which is what we want for our data sheet. But for our totals, we need to add four to it to push its value over to column F. And now we see that everything is looking correct on our pie chart. After our initial animation ends, Let's keyframe the value going from 1 to 2, which is columns B to C, over time. And now everything animates nicely. If you have multiple columns of data, you can just keep animating that value behavior to keep accessing the other columns. You can also access the like and subscribe buttons down below if you haven't already. Currently, we see that the subscribe value in our graph is visible at the start, even though its value is zero. If we want a value to disappear when it's zero, we can add a number range to our base null inside of the arcs folder. Set the source minimum and maximum to zero and one, and the output minimum and maximum to zero and 100. Connect the output of our data spreadsheet into the value and the output of the number range to the opacity of the null. Now we see that when a value goes to zero, the text and arrow disappear to not take up space anymore. If you need to show the actual value of the data alongside of its name, then disconnect the name sheet from our string attribute, click on this little plus, and add a string generator. Here you can set the precision and padding to whatever you need it to be. I'm going with precision two and zero padding. Connect the data sheet into the number attribute. For the name, decide if you want it to come before or after the number, and add another string generator to the prefix or suffix accordingly. I want mine to be before the number, so I'll go with prefix. Set that string generator to formatted string, and connect the name sheet into the string attribute. I don't need any extra formatting for this one, so we can just set the formatted string attribute to just curly bracket zero curly bracket. And then make sure to add a space in the suffix attribute. You can also adjust the main text layer's text box width and height to further style the names. You can also play around with the other manipulators in the main text layer to make your text fancier. Now we actually have a problem here. By connecting the data sheet to our text box, we aren't getting the proper numbers since we are remapping our data sheet. To fix that, Duplicate the data sheet and rename it to data unmapped. Set remapping to none. And we should also delete this new interpolator and connect our original interpolator back in. This way we only need to animate one thing and everything is connected. Now connect that sheet into our string generator. And finally, to make the animation easier, we can add an animation control to that initial animation so that we can reverse out to remove the graph whenever we want to. So like always, when using the animation control, we need to make sure that all of our animated layers have keyframes on the same start and end points. Deselect all your layers and then hit the animation layer filter button. We should see three layers related to our arc and one layer for the column interpolation, which we can just ignore. Let's add keyframes to frame zero and also on the last frame that has animation. Hopefully you've named your layer something good so that you can tell which one is which. It's also a good idea to select these keyframes and pull up the graph editor to confirm that there's no motion where it shouldn't be. Now we can add an animation control to the scene and connect it to these three layers. 
and then animate that at the start and end of our clip. With this method, we can pop on and off our graph whenever we want without having to reanimate things over and over. And since we didn't connect it to our interpolator, we can also interpolate the data independently of this. Animating data across columns like this works for any of the charts that we've created in the series as well. Next time, we scatter.